Music time in Africa. Music time in Africa is the end result of decades worth of work by Leo Sarkeesian to collect the music of the people of Africa. It grew in popularity because the point was to showcase music from across the entire continent and so that people in various parts of Africa could hear music from other parts of Africa. And Leo firmly believed that music and dance transcended national boundaries. It transcended tribal regions. And he worked very hard to bring that kind of ethic of community in the way he put the shows together. I discovered that he had this large archive at the Voice of America in Washington, DC. And it had not been cataloged, let alone digitized. They started boxing up and sending away the old-fashioned tapes and records and 45s to remote storage. We call it the salt mine in Pennsylvania because that's actually what it is. We were alarmed and greatly distressed because many of these recordings are styles of music performance that have since been replaced by new styles of performance and are not replicable anymore. Our only chance of being able to safeguard that was to find the money to be able to digitize them. We decided we would try to digitize the best copy of every radio program that we could find among the 3,800 tapes that represented Music Time in Africa. We found 900 of those possible good radio programs. We didn't know what we had. Digitizing fragile tapes is not enough. Without access, you're just relegating the digits to the same kind of loss and obscurity that befalls the original tapes to begin with. So we ended up building a system. What we needed was an interface that allowed people to read the script, search on the text, and then listen to the radio program, and then be able to move through the whole collection back and forth. What you're left with is the interesting cross-connections between the written word and the spoken word, and what you can learn and what you can experience when you can put text together with sound. As you know, that was just a very small part of the extremely rich variety of traditional music in Ghana. I'll leave some for next time. The beauty of what we've done with Music Time in Africa is take the recordings of a radio program that have only been heard once, and they've only been heard in Africa and make it possible for them to be heard multiple times, to be studied, to be enjoyed. We can still engage with Leo across time, across space, across the boundary between life and death by learning from all the work that he did and his efforts to bring these forms of music to wider audiences. We're carrying on the tradition that Leo established for the program of breaching boundaries, of opening this music and these ideas to new audiences and people who weren't even born when the program was broadcast. Being able to honor that legacy and make sure that it does not lie buried in a salt mine or elsewhere and is used by people, that is the joy that I especially have working on this project. I feel very strongly that we've done right by something that was going to disappear from the minds and the hearts of people who cared about this material and about this radio program for, for decades. That does it for today, friends. I'm Rita Rochelle saying so long for Music Time in Africa.